and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. You are welcome to another edition of this television program, The Kingdom World, coming to you from the Kingdom Mission Support Foundation. We have been considering a body with an overall heading in this series of having eternal relevance in God. And in it, we have been attempting to say that there are many people today who have no relevance in God at all. These are unbelievers. But among Christians, some are having relevance in God now, but are not being careful to prepare to have relevance in God in the life to come. Having relevance in God, like the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew chapter 19 from verse 16, the Lord Jesus Christ was approached by a young man who was very rich. And this young man had a lot of possessions. He was religious. He wanted to have a relationship with God. And the Lord Jesus Christ told him how he might have that relationship. And he wanted a higher level. He was called by the Lord because he loved him onto a higher level of relationship with him. And he told him, well, if you want to have that higher level of relationship with me, sell everything you have and follow me. And we still say last week that the Lord was not asking him to be a philanthropist. A philanthropist is one who gives out material things but does not have God in his life. But when you are a philanthropist, you attend to the needs of the poor and the needy, and then you give your heart to God and attend to the needs of God, then you are an overcomer, being relevant not only in this life, but in the life to come. So God wants us to have relevance in God. There are many people today who are very relevant in this world system. The book of Psalm 49 tells us that these ones write their names on the earth, but their names are not written in the heaven's land book of life. So, it is better to have relevance in God. But even among those that have come to the relationship in Christ Jesus, who are already being relevant in him now, who are doing great things in his name, the Lord says, it is, we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold or keep the beginning of our confidence in him, steadfast unto the end. So we can say that there is a call of the Spirit. There is a call of the Spirit upon everyone who is in the Lord Jesus Christ at this time of the end. We are in a time when there is so much darkness upon the earth and gross darkness upon the faces of the people. Christianity, on a general sense, is no longer vis visibly what it used to be. In our many churches and fellowship groups, the level of commitment to the Lord is so low. Many years ago, on the university campuses, God raised a crop of young men and women then who are the ones in the many of the major ministries in this nation and many parts of the world today from Nigeria, from the university campuses in the 70s and in the 80s. In those days, those who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ were one. They did not have the emblems of denominations. Today, denominations have infiltrated our university campuses. Many of our young believers are not focused. Many of them are not committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the ideals. In those days, we were all together, went out as a team of young men and women to villages, not in the name of any denomination, but as a body of Christians coming from many denominations and church groups. Such wonderful ideals are no longer there. And because of that, people are now only going as far as their denominations are affording them. 
The Bible says it is sufficient that a disciple be as his master. So we find that the level of commitment, in, in those days, if you found one person in fornication, even who mistakenly slept with another person, with, with his fiancé or fiancé, now you discover that in those days, they will lament, they will come and report themselves. They will weep and the whole fellow Christian fellowship will lament and weep because abomination has been committed. Today it is not so. Young boys and girls who claim to be fiancés and fiancées are living together off campus. These are information we have. Many of them are choir directors in the denomination in campus fellowship. Some are even campus pastors. But they are living in sin. Young girls are the ones that are cooking their food and attending to them, forgetting that it is not water they have running in their veins. So we have a lot of stench. So what is the call of the spirit? Come up hither. That's where we rounded up the last edition. Now, the Lord in Revelation chapter 4 and verses 1 and 2 spoke through the voice of the trumpet to John. He says, come up hither and I will show you things that will take place hereafter. Because those that shall have relevance in God, there are many things about this relevance in God that the Lord seeks to show unto us. The Bible says that they shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That was the promise to the apostles. Now, the Lord also said in Revelation chapter 20, where John said, I saw thrones, and authority was given unto them. And these were the people who have given everything over to the Lord, including them of them had to pay the price with their own lives, seal their faith with their blood. Now, let us understand. The reason why we need to bring this message is that many young Christians are confused. Many young Christians came to Christianity when a lot of mess has entered into the church. But we are in the days of restoration when the Lord is cleaning up the mess. The Lord is releasing vessels of prophecy, vessels human agents who will preach consecrated lives, who will direct the people on the way to Zion. Because right now, according to the book of Lamentation, the ways of Zion are mourning. Because there are certain appointed feasts and assemblies speaking about certain emblems of the true faith that many have abandoned. The Lord is calling us to come up. Come up out of dead religion. Come up out of church programs and panoramas that do not give credence to the life of Jesus. Come up out of a life of sin. Come up out of a life of religion. Now, the Lord is now beckoning. What will we now come up? What is he calling us to come up onto? He's calling us to come up onto a consecrated living. We dare say that many of our people in many of our churches are believers, in quotes, but are not consecrated. The messages that they receive contribute to this. Because this food you eat, even physically, they take how your complexion is. You, people say you are what you eat. But where people are only taught how to make money Sunday after Sunday, midweek after midweek, they are taught how to balance their account. There's nothing wrong in making money. But there's everything wrong in placing money making above life in the spirit. That's the emphasis. And many of the people will tell you, no, make money so I can use it for the kingdom. They are not using it for kingdom. They are using it to buy properties abroad. Because that is what many of their mentors are doing. Now, but the Lord is calling us to come up unto a consecrated living. And we shall take our text from a scripture in the New Testament and we shall refer to a scripture in the Old Testament. Because the Lord is saying, come up hither. So it's telling us we have looked at what he's asking us to come up from, and we're now looking at what he's asking us to come into. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So this is what we are being called into. We are being called into a life in the spirit. He says, I beseech you, present your bodies. The word body there is not in singular, but in plural. Now, he speaks of you as a person, presenting the totality of your members, in plural, the whole of your faculty, unto God as a sacrifice that is living, and let it have the mark and the emblem of holiness. Holiness is becoming strange in the courts of Pentecost. Messages and ministrations on living holy are becoming strange in the church. We can talk about money doubling, talk about money making, talking about making training your mind, talking about being relevant in the things of this life. Nobody should push you aside. You're a king's kid. You're a father's son. Fine. But we don't talk about holiness. And the Lord is very clear. The Lord doesn't bend, and he will not change his standard. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. My concern is that we are raising up in our new generation churches an army of youths, prosperous young executives that are religious but are rebellious against the truth. The reason is because there are seducing spirits that have been released into our churches to mix the wine with water. Wine symbolizes the revelation of God's word. To encourage people in carnality. And so we are told it doesn't matter how you dress. But Brother Paul tells us it does matter. Brother Peter says it does matter that our women should dress as becoming holy women whose attention should be nurturing the inner man of the heart, the hidden man of the heart, that which is, cannot be corrupted. But we see fashion competition. Even churches today not only look away from what people wear during some conventions and annual feasts, whatever, they organize competition, fashion competition. I have seen it. I have known it. I've heard of it. There are many churches, denominations that have fashion parades, fashion competition. Those of you from this state, come and show your fashion. Those of you from that state, come and show your fashion. When did the church fall from grace to this extent? But we are in the days of restoration. And that's why this message is coming to you. The Lord is asking you, come up here. You are the final person that can determine whether you will stay and die where God is not, or you will come up and begin to seek the way to Zion. You begin to seek the way to true faith and life in the Lord Jesus, because the whole table is full of vomit. But we thank the Lord because he has not left himself without a witness. You can watch past episode of Kingdom World on YouTube through www.youtube.com slash user slash Kingdom World Online. Also visit www.kingdomworld.net for mp3 and other Kingdom resources. The Lord has kept for himself, according to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. He said, except the Lord of hosts has left unto us a very small remnant. And it's as serious as this today. The number of the remnants is very small. Who are the remnants? The remnants are those that remain with him, with God, when others are going away. Many Christians and pastors and church overseers are going away from him by the things we believe, by the things we preach, by the things we allow, by the things we turn away our eyes from. But the Lord has been faithful. He will never leave himself without a witness. 
The church in Philadelphia was a witness to the seven churches in Asia Minor. He has not left himself without a witness. They are even a present on this earth. Even in our churches, a band of overcomers whose lives are to be a testimony unto us. The Lord Jesus Christ said in each of the seven churches, He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So the Lord is saying that we should present our bodies. I enjoy fellow ministers in the Lord Jesus, by the mercies of God, speak to these young ones to present their bodies. The body is in plural, so it's not only talking about the physical body, it's a part of it, but it's talking about all that you are and all that you have. Present it to God as a living sacrifice. Many in the church are using this world and they are abusing it. Many are using grace and abusing grace. Many are taking advantage of the message of grace and they are becoming licentious. In many of our churches today, anything goes. People are going for evening service, young boys and girls that have no relationship, holding their hands together in very amorous ways. I was somewhere to minister and I was driving into the church for ministry and lo and behold, a young boy and a girl, many of these young people holding their hands in very amorous ways. When did this happen? And we, servants of God, are turning the other eye. We are not helping these ones. We are drowning, allowing their souls to drown in perdition. But servants of God that fail to speak out in the days of evil shall answer before the Lord for it. So the Lord says in verse 2, As you seek to present your bodies, your total being as a living sacrifice, don't be conformed to this world. But be transformed. What does conformity to the world mean? It means seeking to have relevance in the world. A believer has no business seeking relevance in the world. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, herein we have no continuing city, but we seek one that is to come. And the Bible tells us about those who have gone ahead of us, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and the heroes of the faith. The Bible tells us that they sought for a city that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So many people of God today are seeking relevance in this present life. But the Lord is saying here, don't seek relevance in this world because you can never beat Satan on his own ground. You can't beat the devil and the children of Satan on their ground. You are a worker in an office, and because you are a top executive, you meet important personalities, and then you begin to wear skirts that are so short because they tell you don't dress like an old-fashioned mama. And then you are looking for very short skirts, and as you are about to drive, entering your car, you are pulling the skirt, and the skirt is pulling you, and you are saying, well, it's not your fault because it's my profession. Because you know in my profession, there's a way we look. In my profession, there's a way we dress. Or young men, in your profession, you are seeking for contracts. You want to move with the men that are in town. You are seeking relevance. You go with them to gardens to eat pepper soup and drink at unholy hours, at lunch times. And you are seeking relevance in God. It's not possible. You cannot have the two together. You cannot have two masters. Those who seek relevance in God will take heed deliberately, address themselves not to be conformed to this world. Because the present world and the fashions of it are passing away. But only those that will do the will of God will abide forever. There are many believers who are erroneously seeking relevance in the world system because people are making fun of them. People are castigating them. They are jeering at them. They are calling them all manner of abominable names. And because of that, you want to show them that you are not as bad as they think you are. Why not maintain your identity? The truth is this. They are talking against you, about you, because they cannot be like you. 
Many of them see your standard as being too high for them. So they castigate you, they talk against you because they want to bring you down from your estate. And many of us ignorantly succumb. We are called to come down and we come down and we seek to conform with this present life. You want to compete as a servant of God with your former colleague who is a captain of industries because the other day you met him somewhere you saw the bodyguards he had, you saw the cars he rode, invited you for lunch, you saw the palatial building he's living in that the office gave him or the office bought or rented for him and then your head is turning and you want to live the life of a captain of industry as a servant of God. These are the problems that many of us are having. Many Christians today are not able to reconcile their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ with the world around them. But that is where overcoming has to be. We must overcome. We must recognize that we are different. We must recognize that our citizenship is not in this life, but in heaven. According to Re uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. And so we must not seek to be like this world. We must not seek conformity. But rather, any measure of conformity in us, we must seek to be transformed from it. We must seek for a change. And this can only come as we renew our mind. Renew our mind with the word of God. Renew our mind by relationship with God. Renew our mind by having good, rich, and sound devotional life with God. Many Christians today are too busy to read their Bibles. Many are too busy to pray. And for some, they say it's not their fault because the situation is so choky. You come back from work at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., and by 5 a.m., you've got to set out, and you have to wake up at 3 o'clock to take care of your children, and so you have your devotion inside the car. As you are honing for that Okada man to get out of your way, you are saying, Father, bless me today and prosper my way, and you are listening to cassettes and tapes and not reading the scriptures, we are in an age that is anti-Christ. But don't succumb. Whatever it will take you, whatever it will cost you to pull yourself from this world system and come up unto the Lord, do it. The Bible says don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We shall round up close today with the mind of God in raising up, in making a provision in the Old Testament. In Numbers chapter 6, for a vow that can be made, it was referred to as a vow of a Nazarite. And so we see, we read in Numbers chapter 6 verse 1, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord, that is to give themselves totally without reservation. That was what the Lord was demanding in the previous episodes that we have in this message. That rich young man who had a lot of possession wanted to follow the Lord, the Lord told him the condition for completeness in him is to sell everything that you have. The Lord was more or less saying, live your life in total compliance with the demands of the principles of the kingdom of God. Give yourself entirely to me. So the Lord made that provision in the Old Testament. When a people shall vow to separate themselves entirely unto the Lord, and we are told that when the people take such a vow, verse 3 says there are three things that are highlights of that separation. Verse 3 says he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. And not only that, we are told that he shall not take vinegar or strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat any moist grapes or dried. So, the prescription for one who took the vow of a Nazarite 
was that he would not live like others live. He would give God everything so that every part of him and all he possessed will be for the service of the Lord. Now, this was not a compulsory vow. Now, this vow of a Nazarite was compulsory for all priests, but it was voluntary for Israelites. And we are saying that as priests in Christ Jesus, because the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that ye are a royal priesthood. As royal priests of the Lord, we are enjoined to give everything over to the Lord. In fact, these all those who were ever relevant in God in the Old Testament and, New, and up to the New Testament time, the Bible times, we are Nazarites. The Lord Jesus himself was a Nazarite. Samson was a Nazarite. The prophets were Nazarites because they gave God everything. They took a vow of a life of restrictions. If you read from verses 4 to 6, we are told that this restriction in diet, they had restrictions in their diet, they had restrictions in their association, you cannot come at a dead person. They had restrictions in their personal conduct, you cannot even crepe your hair because the, 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 the locks of their hair was a mark of their consecrated living. So the life of a Nazarite was entirely a life of restriction, but a life totally devoted to God. And John the Baptist was a Nazarite. He checked the scriptures. All those who were relevant in God in this, in this, in this present life were people that gave themselves over to the Lord. That's why Hebrews chapter 11 tells us about the heroes of faith. And this they have done so that they can obtain a better resurrection, so that they can have better relevance in God in the life to come. We seek to provoke your spirit as a child of God. You can be relevant in God in this life and be very relevant in him in the life to come. You can be relevant in God in this present life and lose your relevance in him in the life to come. May the Lord assist your heart. May you submit yourself to him to embrace the principles of the present truth coming in the house of God. The Lord bless your heart. Tune in next week as we continue this message. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. This message and other messages of the End Time Vision are available on audio CDs, VCDs, DVDs and MP3s and the following books. For details, visit us on www.kingdomword.net or email info at kingdomword.net or call these numbers 0302-234-1000.